All right, match um, five or match four. I don't. I don't really know at this point. I also just realized that my that I, we should have two wins and one. We should have three wins and one loss. But um, again, one of those is showing up as one win and two draws, uh, which is you know the shadow matchup that we uh, where they presented the scores at the last moment and took over the game. <clears throat> um, for some reason, that match is showing up as two draws and one and one win. That one win, though, should be a loss, um, and the two draws should be wins, so something weird happened there. Um, but it's also showing our two other wins from earlier in the league as losses, and I look at the results, even though it's it has both correctly noted as two wins, one losses, but it has L next to them instead of W, whereas the the last you know match four, basically, we just played has a W next to it. Really strange and glitched. Plus, the uh, the lobby area is, is showing uh, four wins, and uh, they're showing three wins and zero losses. Like, it's not even counting that Shadow matchup, uh, either as a draw or whatever, or, or as a loss, which it was. I don't know. Really strange, but I guess kind of cool that uh, this glitch happens to happen on camera. So we get to see if we get to have... I mean, so if we end up getting a sixth uh, league round, maybe this becomes the stuff of legend. Um, I don't know if anybody has ever got a sixth league round. The legendary round six, the like in Street Fighter, the legendary final round. You know, like I wonder how many people have played Street Fighter for like a long time and never actually heard the announcer say final round instead of a uh, round two fight. You know, final round. Um, I don't remember exactly if it's if it said final round or final round fight or something. Anyway, it's been a while. And I think, and I think I'm, uh, I'm kind of parroting the uh, CPS one voice too. Well, Blood Moon, you know, this is definitely one of the, I, s I would say, more normal matchups that Blood Moon is going to pull a lot of weight. It's actually the more unusual matchup where Blood Moon does little, if if anything. Oh, and it's actually Amulet. I thought for a second maybe it was Classic uh, Valakut, but nope, it's a, uh, it's good old Amulet Titan. Um. Yeah, let's play uh, Swift Spear. Let's let's hold up Bolt. We're basically um, kind of leaning on Blood Moon, so it's not a lot of reason to just run the Bolt out. We're not trying to race. We're trying to run away with Blood Moon. They have a basic. Uh, that means they get to play Magic. Boo. Um, I think we'll... Alright, alright. Let's see what this means. Um... All right, hopefully this doesn't mean somehow they get to play Titan. I don't think it does. And I think we're gonna we're gonna just whittle this down, you know, ahead of time. Just be mana efficient. We lose out on the two prowess triggers, but next turn we are for sure slamming, you know, slamming Blood Moon. We have to, otherwise we just lose. We just straight lose. And most likely the last card in their hand was Titan, so, you know, hopefully they don't have a way to deal with the Blood Moon. Could pack for a, uh, for a, uh, what it's called, whatever it's called, something Shaman. Um, but they have to draw a pack. If they had packed in their hand instead of Titan, you know, who knows. Uh, what is this? Oh, Karn. Maybe Karn was the last card in their hand. Karn seems like an odd card, but, uh, but I, I think Karn is, ex I, I, I would probably at least experiment with Karn in this deck if I were to play this deck, which I have no real desire to whatsoever. Um, I like these kind of toolboxy type uh, type cards. I'm almost tempted to play some. You know, the thing is, I'm not necessarily against playing bigger mana strategies. I just, for some reason, am so captivated by the idea of making making a a strategy monocolor if possible. So, you know, maybe one of these days I'll play so-called big red. Um, I have played multicolor decks. I mean, like when Luris was spoiled, like uh, before the companion nerf, there was just no way I wasn't going to jam um, red white prowess. No matter how much I love monocolor, like you know, at, at a certain point, like Luris was just one of the most busted things to happen to Magic in a long time before the companion nerf. So, uh, yeah, you know. Um, so let's see here. Uh, we could go for Obosh. Um, 
one, two, three, four, five. Because you see, the problem here is this isn't exactly a very man efficient turn. Oh, but actually, no, we we got to we got to go after Karn. So we are going to stomp, and we're going to go after Karn. I forgot, I forgot. Excuse me, people. It's really not as close as it seems. And you know, do we go after them? Do we stomp again? I mean, it's man efficient. I don't know. Could be wrong, but we're going to stomp them. I just, I just can't really uh, resist the mana, <coughs> the mana efficiency angle here. And hopefully, they get stuck on, stuck on mana. It's probably a mistake because I don't really think, I don't really think there's. Yeah, whittling down um, worm coil is pretty big game too. Uh, and I think we want to put Obosh to hand. On the other hand, we could play another one of these, put Obosh to hand, but I like the idea of putting Obosh to hand because if we draw something like Lightning Bolt, it's a clean kill. But yeah, see here we would have had the two mana open anyway, we could have whittled down the Worm Coil. You know, that would probably would have been better. Okay, a little surprised that they just go for the attack, because uh, we are, we can crack back for six, once we land Obosh. And we also get a clean kill. Um, I mean, we may not want to though, because the tokens are kind of annoying. Yeah, so if they attack, we just flame slash the uh, grazer, and then hopefully, hopefully, just went on the crackback because they'll be taking four, eight, twelve, eighteen damage. That's a lot. Because each of the pros triggers will get a pro. Each of the pros creatures gets a trigger, and doubles damage. If they don't attack, I think we flame slash the worm coil and then attack with the prowess creatures. Offer as many trades as they want. And then, uh, and then get busy with the uh, playing the Bone Crushers, and then finally start attacking with Obosh once the Death Touch creature is gone. As long as they can't start playing Titans. Okay, gutsy. We're there's no way we're blocking. Um, well, let's go for the win. Hopefully, they don't have Dismember or something. But even if they do, we've got a Bone Crusher Giant waiting in the wings. And let's just play this so we can uh, yield all. Alright. Bam! That's a lot of damage. <sighs> Blood Moon's sweet. Letting us win game one is that we otherwise have absolutely no business winning. Absolutely no business winning. Uh, unfortunately, it gets significantly tougher in games 2 and 3, which is one reason why Blood Moon in the main feels kind of essential nowadays, because they have they are quite prepared for Blood Moon in games 2 and 3. Not so much in game 1, typically. Um, it was kind of lucky we had Blood Moon, because we're not guaranteed to have it. Uh, there's some consideration to spreading to Shattering Spear on the draw, because... Um, because... Uh, um, Amulet of Vigor uh, can sometimes power out turn three or even turn two titans which is before we can land our blood moon so i think i think on the play these are gonna turn two titans are very unlikely but turn three titans are very possible with um with uh with amulet they're technically possible without amulet but they're not as they're not as likely but you know obviously a grazer into um into like a dryad it can make a turn three titan possible but but the thing is with Amulet, though, the Titans spiral out of control way quicker. We can actually win even if they play a turn 3 Titan as long as they don't have an Amulet, but turn 3 Titan plus Amulet? Uh-uh. Ain't gonna happen, so we are going to play some Shattering Sprees. Uh, and I think, out of all the cards to cut, believe it or not, I think Lava Dart is the, one, is the weakest link, so to speak. Believe it or not, Bone Crusher Giant is clunky, but, like, I get it. We kind of need as much help as we can um, if the game goes late. They are prepared with their Karns, obviously, bringing forth Worm Coil engines. 
and they've got and obviously Titan even if it even if their lands are shut off is still a six six trampler which can sometimes just win the game even without any shenanigans from the lands. So, yeah, it's having having like Lava Dart's the weakest link because it only represents two damage. Um, it is it can lead to quick kills, but I find that uh, more often we lose. You know, more often we'll lose uh, in a situation where we could have otherwise won if we had played like a more powerful spell post uh, post Titan resolving and then us resolving a Blood Moon. Obviously, we have to keep this hand, but uh, you know it's fairly likely that they have um, that they have an answer to Blood Moon. Um, but we can curve into it. I don't like these grazers because they slow the game down a lot, and playing light, using lightning bolt on it feels not very good to say the least. I don't know why they thought grazer was a good card to print. It's not like broken or anything, but it just shores up some. It just helps uh, these decks against uh, more aggro-ish decks, which I don't think they should be helped because I think these decks need a Predator and Grazer helps to have them not have Predators. Um, I'm probably going after the going after the Dryad. I mean, I could play the Swiss Spear, bolt the, uh, the Grazer, and then but then they could play two lands out um, no because actually we have to land blood moon next turn so I think we have to deal with the Titan with the dryad this turn um, because next turn yeah And also, yeah, and actually the main reason we have to deal with this next turn is because uh, we will just die if they have Titan in hand, which they probably do. It looks like we are playing for the, um, playing to try to make the comeback. They're probably going to land Titan next turn. They have one, two, three. All they need to do is drop one more land that doesn't come into play tapped. And uh, they have, well, oh yeah, I forgot. They got Summoner's Pact. Um, okay, actually, we may, we may be able to cruise to victory here, but... Again, they probably have a way to deal with, um, you know, they probably have a way to deal with uh, Blood Moon. Or they might just be going for the natural Titan play. Either way, it's very clear we have to play Blood Moon. This will either force them to take a turn off to deal with it, or it will make it so that we can play to come back after they land a Titan. But see, we had to deal with Dryad, though, because if they play Titan and they... Well, I guess if they have Dryad under a Blood Moon, it's not that big of a deal. But the, the Nightmare is obviously, if they have Dryad in play and they land Titan, they can get a ton of Valakut triggers. Okay, so I think I think in, uh, we have a Titan incoming, most likely. It would actually kind of be good if they have a Titan, because probably the last card in their hand was a Titan and they drew a land, which means hopefully they don't have uh, an ability to deal with Blood Moon. Uh, interesting they went for that rather than the card that can deal with Blood Moon, but, you know, it's not unreasonable for them to hope they can win with a 6-6 six, six Trampler that keeps pulling lands out of their deck, thinning them, hopefully making it more likely to draw an answer to Blood Moon down the road. I can respect that. Probably pulled all their forests at this point. Um, hmm. I kind of want to put Obosh to hand, but on the other hand, I kind of want to whittle Titan down too. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's attack with just Swift Spear. That way we're. We've got some defense and some offense. Hopefully they block. Well, a little gutsy, 
but uh, so it goes sometimes. Actually, I probably probably should have bolted bolted this, and then and then I probably should have uh, sh shocked them. Yeah, we could have we could have shocked face, and uh, probably could have. Uh, so they they should be at two life less. It's kind of unlikely to make a difference, but you know, you know, you'd think we would tip off the opponent to our play because of um. This is also dangerous because they may have uh, engineer explosives, which they can play on three. Okay, thank goodness. And I think we'll just play a giant. If we knew we had our, if we knew we were going to hit our uh, fifth land, I think we put Obosh in the hand. But um, since we don't, let's just get some guaranteed value for next turn. And if they do have another Titan, we uh, we do have enough blockers to block it next turn. Yeah, see, a surprising amount of these games end up uh, end up going after Titan's Resolve. I mean, if we have Blood Moon, okay. So they still did have more forests. Uh, hmm. I so we got two choices. We can put Obosh in the hand, or we can light up the stage. I think I'm going to light up the stage. Let's see what we get. Alright. Well, no point in sandbagging these. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, can't really attack. I, I don't think they play main deck removal that's not, like, they might have dismember, but, you know. Uh, I am going to risk it and triple block. Soul Scar, Swiss Spear, Bone Crusher. We're not gonna we're not gonna you know um, quad block because at the end of the day if they can somehow deal with Bone Crusher Giant then then they can kill the rest of our creatures so no need to expose more than and if there's one more creature we want sticking around probably Soul Scars are is our best being able to whittle it down. Um, I mean on the other hand we could just crack back. I mean we are actually out racing them right. I don't think about it. We can't let the Titan stick, though. That's the problem. Hopefully, they don't have a removal spell. But like, we, we they might be hoping we uh, let it through. But we can't, we can't let it stick. It's just because if, if they draw some type of um, some type of uh, remo removal for Blood Moon, then it's just game over. And we do have a backup too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we couldn't deal with it. I mean, we had like so. It, it's good that we saved the life and. Uh, Oh yeah, and I forgot. Actually, one of them still lives too, which is also good. Um, you have to take the hit from this one. That's a lot of titans. Three titans. Um, hmm. Um, I'm actually gonna stomp this. This once this might because you know if we can deter the attack that's pretty big because basically once we can uh, put Obosh in the hand and land it <clears throat> then uh, then we can flashback the firebolt and finish off the farm evil titan. All right. Well, at least we whittled down the titan. We still have the Obosh line. Interesting, they don't attack. Uh, we could Firebolt, but uh, I think I'm just going to put Obosh to hand. And, you know, I'm just going to play out the land just in case we draw like a Season Pyromancer or something. Yeah, they, actually I see why they don't attack. Well, I don't know, they could have attacked relatively freely, but yeah, they should have attacked. So they're probably going to crew the Council, yeah. Dealing six damage is pretty. It's pretty good rate. Plus, they get to kill one of our soul scars, which is nice. Uh, so let's see here. Well, I guess we'll play out the land, and I guess we'll attack too. Um, 
And hopefully they don't have an ability to present another Titan. Because, uh... You know, because they will probably outgrind us. So they can deal another, deal us another six, and deal with our Soul Scar. I think this is Dismember. Yeah, Dismember. I see this in their deck sometimes. All right, I gotta draw another removal spell, or they may actually. Uh... Wow. They actually outgrinded us, uh... even with a Blood Moon in play. Oh, and a. There's the Reclamation Sage, that's what it's called. <clears throat> I think I pulled a lot of cards out of their deck, but... I still can't help but feel that this was kind of lucky from the opponent, but... Um, but, you know... What would the Titan players do without, uh, without luck, right? How did they crew that, I wonder? Oh yeah, they can they can tap both creatures. Hopefully the yield until next end step button works now. Nope, that still looks like it doesn't work. All right, it just happens that way sometimes. I still like this uh, configuration, though, so we'll run it back. It's a pretty decent hand, just no blood moon. Um, yeah, but the lack of blood moon. There's no blood moon, there's no pressure. I think we've got to throw it back. Okay, well, there's no pressure, but there is blood moon. So, we're going to keep. Now, the unfortunate thing is we have to face the very tough decision of what to put, um, what to put on the bottom. I think we're going to put Season Pyromancer, and the reason why is because that really doesn't help us curve into Blood Moon. It does give us some late game potential, but, you know, hopefully the light up the stage will shore up some of that. The Shattering Speed can be very important if they play a uh, Amulet. They might have actually, you know, take an Amulet out. I kind of doubt they would, <clears throat> but, uh, you know, who knows. I doubt the Lava Darts would really... Help a ton. And hopefully the Ghost Quarter is a good sign. Usually when they play like a colorless land like this, they play a, um, a uh, amulet, but, you know. We'll, we'll take it. If they have no basics, maybe they just don't play magic. You know, not the most riveting gameplay, but better than losing to, to uh, Amulet Titan, if I do say so myself. The, the honest truth is, um, there really just isn't a lot of interesting play to this, uh, to these amulet matchups, I mean, to these titan matchups. They just, they just sort of, like, do their thing and try to get into titan, just try to go for titan, and we just try to go for blood moon, and then it's just like, hey, you know, alright, well, Blood Moon time. Hopefully they don't have a Reclamation Sage. Hopefully we can find another Blood Moon, though. That's also another thing. It's probably an EE. 
Okay, better than an EE for three, I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, let's light it up. I mean, we could actually shattering spree this, but we don't. We can wait on that. Let's. Oof. Next turn, I'm really tempted to play Season Pyromancer and ditch the Flame Slash and the Shattering Spree. I think it's a oh, it's a, okay. All right, well, we're definitely not dismissing um, ditching the uh, Flame Slash now. I think I think we can live without playing the Swiss Spear, and I think we can live without the Shattering Spree too. I don't think we really, yeah. Um, yeah, let's get rid of the, uh, the Dryad. I know it's weird because we're just, like, basically giving up the, uh, Swiss Spear, but it's dead to the explosives anyway. And we are holding on to the other moon just because, um, hopefully they're not playing, uh, Force of Vigor. I did see that once. It is a worthy consideration for them because they can deal with two Blood Moons even when they're tapped out. They have a lot of green cards to pitch. Even if they have like, even if they're completely locked and with no basics, but I don't think all of them play it. And having two blood moons uh, can be the difference between winning and losing. Um, yeah, having two blood moons can definitely be the difference between winning and losing because uh, they they can't just deal with one and then immediately win. They uh, they have to deal with both. Um, hmm. Well, let's attack, and then I think we'll light up the stage. Probably we'll put uh, Obosh in the hand. Um, I mean, two Blood Moons are good, but we're not necessarily in a rush, because they're not necessarily threatening Titan anytime soon, even if they do deal with Blood Moon. I guess let's might as well finish this off. One problem with playing two Blood Moons, though, is sometimes if they can drop a Dryad and we can't deal with it, and then they drop a uh, EE for three, then they can deal with both Blood Moons at once. Bottom line is we're not under a lot of pressure to force them to have to deal with two Blood Moons at once. Because even if they deal with this one, I think we can, we can, you know, suck it up and play the, uh, play the other one. And landing Obosh is huge because that makes basically that makes every single burn spell able to one shot a, um, a dryad, and uh, eight of our burn spells, flame slash and lightning bolt, be, be able to one shot a titan. So Obosh uh, definitely swings the game dramatically in our favor. Fortunately, it wasn't enough to win game two. That was surprising, but they did have dismember. If they didn't have dismember, I think Obosh would have would have taken over the game. Dismember is a nice option for them if we've got mages on the moon. Well, good to know they, they did have Amulet. Now they are kind of threatening to possibly go off, but I don't think that's going to be enough to deter me from uh, from playing Obosh. Alright, yeah, just remember. <clears throat> so we're probably just playing out the, uh, the Blood Moon and then playing the Season Pyromancer. And then hoping they don't have the ability to to play either another basic or dryad, and then produce three colors for triple, or you know, engineer explosives on three. That would be a disaster. So low on time. Their decision can't be that difficult to make here. Because of Blood Moon, nothing comes into play tapped anyway, so Amulet is not doing anything yet. And their explosives don't do anything. What what decision is there here, I wonder? If, they, if, if it's Dryad, just play it. Um, maybe they have a uh, 
force of vigor and they're wondering whether or not to wait until our turn or to okay summoners pack that can make sense yeah and and okay so it's it's a good thing that we um that we have this backup blood moon now we could actually set uh, sack the fire rallet but i think um but i think uh it's more important to just get our season pyromancer game going i don't really think there's a world where they can somehow get to titan from here, but amulet definitely can do crazy things. I mean, in theory, they could play a second amulet, but then I think, but they don't have another land drop. So even if they have a second amulet, there's not much they can do from there. With another amulet, another and another land drop, then they could, I don't know, play a grazer. No, but then they're out of cards. I mean, I guess another explore, and then, um, yeah, and then hopefully draw into Titan or something. Like you know, anyway. Okay, so here is the plan. We are flame slashing this because obviously flame slash has to get out of our hand, and we're gonna play Blood Moon and then Season Pyromancer, and hopefully they don't have like Aether Gust. That would be that would be horrible. That would be heartbreaking. And it looks like they do not. And I think they die from Pact, which, okay. I guess we'll take that. Well, uh, all right. So, okay, this, uh, it correctly, even though it was showing up, it was showing our matches as funky, um, it did remember the correct, uh, it did remember our match history correctly. Okay, 4-1, not bad. Yep, not bad. Not going to complain. We're actually... Since going back to this list, we went 5 0, 4 1, and then 4 1 again. So we are 13 and 2. That's that if we can if we can replicate that in a big tournament, that's that's definitely top eight, I, I think. Alright, well anyway, we'll see.